there partner welcome back to that another new toy smell uh, apparently you guys like having that new toy smell stuff uh, <laughs> who knew who knew going through the archives find some old stuff uh, you guys would like it so uh, I just wanted to show real quick the drive I ended up using this old shell um, it was a simple tech external hard drive shell uh, and I've got the drive in here, and it's actually using uh, USB 1, 1. 1.0 or 1.1 um, external power there. And uh, I did some um, recovery on it, used uh, Recover from the people who do, uh, was it Crap Cleaner or whatever it's called, um, and found some stuff. Uh, so I've got a few more holes that we can plug uh, into some of these old episodes, so I, I, I do have some more stuff that I can show uh, But I did I found my master list um, the the final episode of that new toy smell was I believe 112 and This list goes up to 107 and uh, I do not have a lot of these a lot of these They may still be on YouTube somewhere Maybe like again, I remember the bulk of them were on blip blip TV uh, and then blip TV You know a couple years ago Crashed went under whatever uh, and as far as I know all that data is gone everything that was ever on there uh, is forever gone Never gonna see that again Some of these were put onto YouTube like we used to break them in chunks and, and put them on YouTube But then like I said YouTube every so often would crash and they'd lose data uh, and stuff and so I don't know some of this stuff. I think might be on there um, And some of it might be Titled differently because one thing we used to do is even though We would we would do like the big show of that new toy smell we would you know each would do our individual sections Right, so if I was doing the toy review uh, of the show I would take the toy review itself a lot of times and upload it to my own channel just so I would have a copy of it so it would still exist uh, for me as like my portfolio of videos and I know some of the other guys well I don't know but I think some of the some of the other guys did that with some of their stuff as well um, which we were always fine with you know as pop culture network goes it's it's like you want to you know uh, have your own stuff post your own stuff up there that's fine you know that's not a problem uh, to have it on your own channel so some of this stuff may exist, but I think when when some of the guys would upload it, it wouldn't be labeled as, you know, Pop Culture Network, That New Toy Smell, Episode 42, uh, Kenner DC Superpowers uh, Review, Part 2, you know, whatever, because it'd be the middle part of the episode, so it was Part 2 of, of that, uh, of Episode 42, uh, they would just say... DC superpowers review or hey remember these superhero toys or something like that which means when you do a search it's almost impossible to find that so some of this stuff may exist in, in some of these other places um, some of it may not um, I don't know um, like I said I did some recovery on the hard drive and I did find another part yesterday I posted stuff from episode 5 uh, and episode five, I had, uh, let's see, top ten Masters of the Universe vehicles and play sets, and then the Masters of the Universe board game, and the, the sound was off on that, and I apologize. Um, some of that stuff, again, it's so old when it encoded, the, the voices were off, and I tried to go in and kind of clean it up so it wasn't too far off, but there's only so much you can do in cleaning some of that stuff up. Um, but then we had... Uh, let's see part three which was the unique 
Masters of the Universe figures. So I did find that one. Um, so I can throw that up there today. And then episode six, we had the uh, 25th anniversary Cobra Commander figure. We had the Crazy Kings of Toys actually sent us a couple of the 25th anniversary G.I. Joe figures, which, as far as I know, we hadn't seen uh, at that point. And so um, I was lucky enough to do a review of that. So I actually have that on my uh, computer. So I can actually, instead of pulling the one that would have been encoded with everything else and put onto YouTube as a low-quality MPEG, I have one that's a nicer quality. Um, I think it's an M, M4V um, is, is what it was. Uh, the only thing is, even though it's going to be nicer than that old MPEG, it's still not great. I mean, we're talking, you know, 2009 um, video encoding here. And one thing you'll notice a lot of times as you go through and look at a lot of this footage, we had a hard time figuring out full screen versus widescreen letterboxing. You know, a lot of people back then still had uh, rectangular TVs. Um, your laptops might be widescreen, but your TVs weren't always necessarily that way. Or when you watch video online, uh, the video would still be in a square basically so we kind of went back and forth on sometimes it was full screen and sometimes it was um letterboxed and wide and whatever so it's, it's kind of you know weird to go through and kind of redo some of that so you did see when i reposted those old ones yesterday i did do it as two layers i put you know a layer down first where i stretched everything out um so you had it filling the entire screen and then i had the regular box you know, in the in the middle there, so it, it would fill the whole widescreen view, um, even though the edges were just blur of what was going on uh, on the screen. Um, but so anyway, we had the G.I. Joe 25th Anniversary Cobra Commander, and then and there's like a bazooka, a Cobra bazooka trooper. Um, then we have 6.2, which was Lance, um, Lance uh, Ito. No, not Lance Ito. Lance... Who was his name? From Retroware TV. He was Ido Bandito. Um, but Lance, Lance, I, I don't remember his last name. Lance Cortez. That's what it was. Lance Cortez from Retroware TV. He wanted to show off his toy collection. So it was a collector's collection corner uh, showing his uh, toy collection there. And then part three was, I believe, a Duvall section. Duvall had done one on Indiana Jones. Um, and I don't have that. That's gone forever. Um, unless, unless Duvall has it somewhere. And if he has, I'd be more than happy to throw it up here. Um, so we have those three sections. We can, well, and you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and jump on to seven. Because in part seven, I only have one of the three segments. Even though only one of those three is mine. And the segment I have is not my segment. Uh, this is, this is weird. This is, I don't know. Again, I don't know how this happens. Um, so wh what I have, episode seven was, was three parts. So part one was another collector's collection. Uh, this was with somebody who collected mask figures. Um, they had a whole bunch of them and they had them in these like plastic display cases. So you, you couldn't really see them that well. And they had, they had videotaped them, uh, and then sent them. Um, and then Duvall interviewed him over the phone and recorded it or interviewed him online, whatever. Um, and then put the interview over the footage of them filming the stuff. But since the guy had everything like packed up, you couldn't really see him that well. Um, he, and he didn't take any of them out and open them and transform them and whatever. It was just like, here's the vehicle in a plastic shell. Um, so it was a little, mm, a little awkward. And it's one that even Duvall admitted later on that it wasn't the best uh, episode of that new toy smell but we also gave him a lot of crap for it and there there were there were some hard feelings from time to time on this show um, Duvall was one that that he's a guy with his his heart's in the right place but he, the way he uses technology is not in the right place. Um, he, he, he's, he, you know, he, he tries really hard, but he was the, the, the biggest issue we hit, we had a lot of time with him is he would film something widescreen and then he'd make it a square, not by cropping it, but by scrunching it. Or he would film it as the square four by three, uh, like a regular TV and then 
spread it widescreen or he would do the interlacing and he'd forget to um, you know tell it to um, you know do the blending the natural blending so um, his the scan lines would be in there and so he took a lot of crap from us and it it was a little unfair as 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 harshly as we gave it to him I mean some of the stuff was bad don't get me wrong and some of the stuff we re-edited after he would like give it to us and I think there was even an occasion where he uploaded it and we 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 deleted it and we did some re-edit and then we re-uploaded it and it's like you know come on um but we were probably a little too mean to Duvall sometimes and this this was the start of part of that where you know uh at the time you know he would try to defend it he was like well you know it's a whatever and then after a while he was like yeah okay it was it was probably not the best looking episode but we shouldn't have hammered him as hard as we did on it. Um, but it made it easy, you know, for everybody to pile on, you know, because that's what you have when you got a group of people. Um, you got four people, uh, five. I mean, at this point, Killen was around. He wasn't really, I don't, he wasn't doing anything on camera or anything, uh, but he was still there hanging around, um, you know, while we were filming all the episodes. So he was another person, um, you know, that would pile on. So we would, you know, be talking to Duvall about some of this stuff, and it was just like, come on, Duvall, and then someone else, yeah, come on, Duvall, and then Duvall, you're worthless, and Duvall, you're terrible, and everybody would just kind of pile on, so, a mm, little tough on that one, so that was 7-1, 7-2 was my first review of Friday the 13th Toys, and then 7-3 was Scotty Cash's look at Bandai's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, okay, I have Scotty Cash's review of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, probably because he put it on a thumb drive, gave it to me to upload, so I copied it off the thumb drive onto my hard drive and then uploaded it to YouTube for him. Um, but I don't have my own Friday the 13th toy review. Now, we did a second Friday the 13th toy review. We did a follow-up on episode 16, by episode 16, we were doing a different format. So these early ones, they were broken up into pieces, you know, into the four different pieces. By the time we get to episode 15, uh, the episodes were one long piece on YouTube. And I think starting with 15 on, maybe, the majority of the show you can find on YouTube, even though, well, some of them, that's not... That's not necessarily 100% true. A lot of it you can find on YouTube from 15 on. It's these earlier ones. And, and there are some holes in these earlier ones that I don't have. Some of these I do, though, so I will, I, like, again, I will piece together what I can. Um, but, um, like, when I look at some of the stuff that's on this list, it's like, like that Friday the 13th. I remember doing the second one, episode 16, because the part... Part of that, the, the toy review part of that, I actually uploaded to my own channel. Uh, and then I re-uploaded it as like a flashback a couple of years ago. Because uh, someone was asking me about it, they couldn't find it, so I re-uploaded it. And then later I went back and looked, and it's like, oh, I, it's, I see it sitting there. So now I've uploaded it twice, but whatever, who cares. Um, but that first one from 7-2, I have no idea what happened to it. So, um, again, I've got, I, around the house there are some other hard drives. And I'm going to try, um, you know, like I did with this one. This one, when I originally plugged it in, this one came up blank. Uh, this is a one terabyte, right? Is this the one terabyte? Where is it at? No, I can't. Yes, this is the one terabyte. So this is the one terabyte. So this one I actually got later on, and I copied some of the other drives over. The drive that was originally in this blue shell, in this simple tech shell, was a 200, a 320 gigabyte. It was a 320 gigabyte. I don't know where that 320 gigabyte drive is that was originally in this shell, but that would have been one of the two that I used because I remember buying it on a Black Friday in 2008 or 2009 with Duvall because he and I would get up at four o'clock in the morning and go out on Black Friday and look for deals because a 320 gigabyte external hard drive back in those days on a Black Friday was like 68 bucks. And it's like, oh my gosh, all that space. Uh, and then years later, I got the one terabyte 
uh, it copied everything from the 320 on the one terabyte and used the one terabyte for a long time. So, uh, like I said, when I pulled this up, you know, if, if I pull it up now, it's completely blank, but I run the recovery software on it. I can find stuff, pull it over to another external drive, and then now I can dig through some of those files and find this stuff. But as far as that original Friday the 13th review, I don't know. So if you guys, if you, if anybody's been looking through uh, toy review videos on YouTube uh, or on Daily Motion um, or Vimeo or any of these places, and you thought, huh, that sounds like dirt, and that's not the same video that's on his channel, that might be my old one. Let me know, because um, I'd like to see it again. Just because I don't, I don't even remember making it. Like, honestly, when I saw it was Friday the 13th, I go, oh, it's this other video. And then I saw, I did it a second time. And then it's, it's, it's like you see that and something in your brain goes, oh, right. There was a different video, but I can't, it, I can't connect it in my brain anywhere. I have no, no idea. So, um, yeah, so that's that. So we're going to take a look here. We're going to jump back. Uh, this is going to fill in what I can to finish off episode five, what I have of episode six, and then the one piece I have of episode seven. Um, then when we get into eight, eight, nine, I think I've got pretty well full. Ten, not a whole lot. I've only got a couple pieces of ten. I've got a couple pieces of eleven. One of twelve. Yeah, so I'm going to have to do some more digging. I'm going to have to do some more digging and dig through some more stuff. But anyway, guys. Here are some more pieces from That New Toy Smell from 2009. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Gang, welcome back to That New Toy Smell of week three of our awesome look at He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Now this week, myself, Scotty Cash, and Pixel Dan have a little something different in mind. We're going to give you another top ten list. Yeah, we already did one, but we're going to give you another one. Basically, we're going to take a look at all the amazingly unique and strange Masters of the Universe and She-Ra figures that have been released through the years. So sit tight, kick back, let's check out the weirdness. I remember walking down the toy aisles in the 80s as a child and seeing all of the unique characters that had been created for the Masters of the Universe and the Princess of Power line lining the shelves. And that's the thing that captures people's imaginations the most when they think about He-Man or She-Ra is the unique characters that were created for the line by Mattel. And today, that new toy smell, myself, Scotty Cash, and Pixel Dan are giving you our top 10 unique characters. Number 10, Perfuma. When it comes to the She-Ra line, there were a lot of unique characters, but one of them, Perfuma, was probably one of the more outrageously unique in the fact that here you had a heroine dressed in this pink bodysuit with green vines all around her. She came with a lime green shield and a comb. Of course, you could comb her rooted hair. I never combed my rooted hair. I mean, I, I never had She-Ra figures when I was... I did, but anyway. She also has a backpack, a green backpack that goes on, on her back that you press a button and a flower pops up. Now, I don't know how much more unique you can get than her power being a flower popping out of her backpack, but then again, I guess you can destroy the evil stench of evil, evil stench of evil, evil stench of evil with the smell of a flower. Number 9, Stinkor. We go from good smell to bad smell, and that new toy smell, plug, is a bad smell. Stink or stinks. Number 8, Slush Head. The New Adventures toy line was full of unique characters, and Slush Head is no exception. Just check out that water-filled dome on his head, and how it magnifies his face. Talk about a unique character. Number 7, Pika Blue. Released the same year as Perfuma, Pika Blue was another interesting and unique character in the She-Ra line as the watchful feathered friend of She-Ra. She had a feather backpack that when you press the button on it, the 
backpack open up like a peacock feather. Number 6. Optic. Choosing another character from the New Adventures toy line, it doesn't get much more unique than Optic. I mean seriously, this guy's head is an eyeball. You can even move the eyeball to look left and right via a small dial on his back. It's almost creepy. Number 5. Twistoid and Rotar Twistoid and Rotar make our list as a tag team, simply because they have no legs. They come out pretty light in the classic line, which makes them extremely rare. They don't stand because they spin like tops, which makes them really hard to display. Number 4, Scareclaw. Now this is a figure that's probably on everybody's favorites list. Scareglow is just awesome. He's like Skeletor with one small difference. He could glow in the dark. And glowing in the dark is one of the coolest action features you could ever add to an action figure. Number 3, Modulock and Multibot. I remember when I was a kid, Modulock and Multibot were two of the coolest He-Man figures I ever owned. You had these two figures that you could take apart piece by piece and put back together in all kinds of different arrangements. You could make hundreds of different figures with the parts from each of them. And it was just a lot of fun. It added to the playability, it added to the awesomeness of the line, and they were just really cool and unique figures to have. Number two. Mosquito. Now this one is my personal favorite Masters of the Universe toy. Mosquito featured a clear plastic chest that was filled with a blood-like substance. Seriously, it was a toy with blood. How cool is that? Number one, Savage He-Man. I thought it was a Wonder Bread He-Man. Wonder Bread He-Man. Did he just say Savage He-Man? Because I'm pretty sure it's Wonder Bread He-Man. Remember, because he came with the black Zodak armor? Or, or, or did he not come with the armor? That's right, he didn't have armor and he came in a bag. Or maybe he came in a box. But Tell doesn't even know if he exists, and neither does Wonder Bread. So therefore, we don't know if he exists. And that's why he makes our number one. And there you go, gang. That new toy smells top 10 unique He-Man and She-Ra figures of all time. Now, of course, this isn't the definitive list. This is just our favorites. Next week, we wrap up our month-long look at He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. So be sure to tune back in next week and check out the last episode of the month. And until then, we'll see you later. Another episode of That New Toy Smell. I'm Pixel Dan. I'm Deval. And we have got a lot of great things for you in this episode. And that's right, we're going to kick things off right away and go into an all new retro return. We're going to take a look at G.I. Joe, a real American hero. They're back with the 25th anniversary and a new movie coming out this summer. And we're going to give you an exclusive look at the history of these figures. So stick around. Tonight, our episode is sponsored by the Crazy Kings of Toys. Dirt? That's right. The Crazy Kings of Toys? Who are they? What are they? Where is their kingdom? Who are their subjects? Tonight we'll have an in-depth expose on Nightside. Back to you, Dirt. What? Are you are you like a news reporter now? Yes, I am. In fact, let's go to Dirt with the weather. Dirt? 
it's cold. Thank you, Dirt. And now, back to you, Dirt. Right. So anyway, the Crazy Kings of Toys, they sent us these toys to review today. These awesome 25th Anniversary G.I. Joe figures. Well, they're, they're Cobra figures, but they're part of the G.I. Joe line. And so we thought, hey, these would be perfect for a retro return episode, because these are returns of the 25th anniversary of the characters that originally came out 25 years ago. Does that make any sense of what I just... Anyway, so we figured retro return, we take a look at the original Cobra Commander, and we compare it to the new Cobra Commander. But then we have this guy, the anti-armor trooper, the Cobra Bazooka trooper, which we can't really seem to find any information on, which makes us think he's not actually a return of a retro figure. He's just kind of made to look like the original figure. So while we can compare and contrast the Cobra Commander, this guy, well, we we can't really do a retro return with him, but... But we thought, hey, uh, they're new in the package. We could rip them open. We could do a grand opening episode, which is fine. That would be perfect. Except, um, well, normally it would be me and Scotty Cash opening them up and talking about them. Uh, and Scotty Cash has some scheduling conflicts and some things going on. He had to save the world. Uh, something's going on with uh, new Krypton out in space. He had to fly out and take care of that. So, um... Uh, Basically, we're going to kind of mix things up. So you're going to have a That New Toy Smell Retro Return Grand Opening or a That New Grand Retro Smell Opening Toy. Smell Toy Opening Retro Grand Toy Smell Opening Return. So here you can see Cobra Commander in all his new 25th anniversary glory. You've got the figure here, which, if you weren't paying attention, you'd think it looks like a classic Joe, but we'll get to that in a minute. You've got the classic artwork here, and I, I don't know why Cobra Commander is carrying a hair dryer, but, well, well, we'll move beyond that. Now, if we look at the original Cobra Commander figure in order to make a comparison, you can see that there are obviously some... Wait a minute. That's, that's not the Cobra Commander. Go back. No. Well, that's Cobra Commander, but that's not the original. Go... Oh, okay, again, that's... That's not the original. We need... Really? That's Cobra... All right. Anyway, let's let's just go back. Stop. Let's just go back and show me the original Cobra Command... Oh, right. He was a, a mail away. Um, okay. Give me the the first retail release of Cobra Commander. And, aha! There's our guy. Now, if we compare the two side by side here, you can see that it really does look a lot like that original package. There are some changes and some changes in the character, but you can see that it works. Now, if we compare him with the anti-armor trooper, you can see that the anti-armor trooper has been made to look like that classic figure also. It's got that retro-looking artwork on it, and it even has its own little file card on the back with all the information that you used to clip and save when you were little. He looks like a classic Joe, but there are some differences compared to the originals. Now, let's go ahead and rip these bad boys open, and you can kind of see how... They still have uh, a lot of accessories. The helmets can come off. You've got guns. Um, you have a piece of the mass device with Cobra Commander. You can even take the knife off of the anti-armor trooper and put it in his hand. His helmet comes off too. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to, you could even take off the helmets and switch them between the guys, but you know, whatever. They do come with figure stands so they can be displayed proudly on your shelf. And if you notice, you can see that they still have all those points of articulation. You can twist them and bend them in just about any position you can imagine. It's always been a staple of the Joe franchise, and it's nice to see that they kept that around. These are some great figures. Even if you're not the biggest fan of Joe's, these are still great to just put on your shelf and display. You really can't go wrong with these, and I'm, I'm glad they're out there. Thanks, Crazy Kings of Toys. We want to throw a special thanks out to crazykingsoftoys.com for supplying some of the wonderful review samples for this episode. That's right, and make sure you check out www.thatnewtoysmell.com to catch up on all the past episodes and check us out in the future. That's right. Until next week. Peace.
Next up, I'm going to do an all-new Collector's Collections episode. I actually sat down with my buddy Lance Cortez, but you may know him as Ito Bandito from RetroWareTV.com. That's right, we're going to take a look at his awesome Batman collection. So let's get right into it. It's very awesome. It is awesome. One of my favorite things to do is take a look at how collectors display their collections. It's almost like looking at a work of art. Everybody does it differently, and it's always exciting to see. Today, we're going to take a look at the collection of one of my good friends. From RetroWareTV.com, it's Lance Ito Cortez and his awesome Batman collection. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I am now joined by Lance, aka Ito from RetroWareTV.com. Lance, how you doing today? Not too bad, how you doing Dan? I am awesome. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at, you know, this footage of your collection and I'm just, I'm blown away by how awesome it is. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. And you got, you got a, a collection, you collect all kinds of things, but what I want to focus on today is your Batman collection, because that's really what stood out to me the most. So we're going to go ahead and I want to talk about some of that with you. And I want to start by asking, you know, why Batman? Why would you? Why do you want to collect so many of these awesome Batman items? Well, I don't know. Just growing up, I'm a, I was a big fan of the, you know, obviously the comics. And uh, just as a kid, I just was was drawn to to Batman. I don't know why. Maybe because it's like a dark uh, superhero. Um, but uh, you know, I, I just it started with uh, probably actually started with the Batman movie when that came out. Oh yeah, uh, awesome. Be- between, the Michael Keaton one, right? <laughs> yeah, well, between that and and th- those figures and the, the classic figures that came out at the same time, and uh, the, the, the superhero figures rather, and uh, yeah, I just started collecting from there. And, and it was weird; it wasn't like it kind of intentionally done. It's just through the years, I just amassed all this Batman stuff, and I like looked back one day, I'm like, well, I have all this Batman stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was your first Batman figure? Was it one of the ones from the movie there? Yeah, it had to be like you know the regular Michael Keaton black Batman there, so black suited Batman. Great. Okay. So, so while we're talking about those figures from the first Batman movie, I noticed that you have three Batmans and three Jokers, and they all look slightly different from each other. Can you explain what the diff- what the deal is with that? Uh, well, the, the the Batman. I know there was two different heads that were made. One was like a more elongated, and one was like shorter right uh, and uh as far as the jokers i think there, there might have been like facial detail uh difference i don't i don't recall 100 <laughs> percent. but it's just I, I what happened is i masked them in lots like i would buy uh, a number of you know the, these these other figures like i bought a lot of the batman returned figures it was sold on a lot on ebay and i ended up getting in that lot another batman or a joker so it was like you know just by buying these lots, I ended up with uh, additional figures, and I just kind of kept them. Oh, yeah, so. definitely. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I will go ahead and point out, too, I've noticed that your whole collection is its still mint on card. You haven't opened, like, any of this stuff. You have them all in the packages. And uh, I even noticed you had, like, from the first movie there, you have a Batmobile, and you have, you know, the Batjet, and, you know, and they're still in the yeah. box. thats Is this stuff... Yeah. Have you always yeah. kept it in the box, or is this like no? Some recent? of the stuff, some of the stuff was repurchased. Some of the stuff, uh, you know, I had opened when I played with when I was little, and I think it was probably in college. I, I went back and, and started trying to obtain some of these figures that I had lost, cause like just for sentimental value, and I ended, up, you know, just for a couple of dollars more, you get them like on the card. So my collection amassed that way, <laughs> and uh, um, as far as the Batmobile, that. That I bought in box, and then the the Batwing actually it's a brand new in box that's never been opened, and uh, so I just kind of got lucky with that one. Yeah, that's that's great. That is really cool. And and you are pretty much a met on card collector, right? I mean, most of your collections I've noticed <laughs> you keep them in the box. Yeah, it, it's it's tough for the most part. I am, but to, to be honest, ever since uh, I'm your your viewers know you do the Pixels to Plastic show on RetroWare TV. Ever since you've been doing that show, uh, I, I'll be honest. I actually kind of stopped collecting toys, but watching that show got me back into it. And then 
uh, you open your fingers and you show them, and I've actually started to do that. <laughs> um, so it's, it, was, it was weird because, like, I was telling my wife, oh, I'm done collecting toys, no more. I'll just concentrate on the games, but all of a sudden I'm having, like, this resurgence of collecting, you know, figures and stuff. <laughs> and I've, 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 I've actually been taking them out of the package, but... I'm sure uh, I'm your no, wife's favorite person now. <laughs> yeah, no, she actually hates you right now. But uh, That's really cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Yeah, but the, the older stuff, the Batman stuff, um, maybe I will eventually when, when I have a child or something, open them up. But uh, th- those are going to stay in the package for a little bit longer. And that's and that's cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I always feel that there's a place, you know. There's, you know, you've always got the place for the mint on card collectors. You've always got the place for the openers. And a lot of times, figures just look so much cooler when they're in the box than they do when they're out of the box. You know, especially. Yeah. Yeah, I can say either either way. Actually, sometimes some figures look better out and some better look yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. I feel the same way. Like a, a lot of the figures that have the cool artwork on it. Like I even want to say like these Batman Returns figures here. I kind of like just the artwork on them, you know. And yeah. While they don't look anything really like the movie, like the Penguin there, <laughs> doesn't really look like yeah. the mood, the Danny DeVito Penguin. But I mean, the, yeah. just the way the box looks. That is that's really. Yeah. Cool. What, what's funny is that that Penguin sculpt is actually very similar to the. The, the superhero sculpted it. It's the Batman Returns Penguin and the superheroes Penguin. If you look at them, they're like pretty much the same. They're just color variants of each other. <laughs> yeah, because I, have... I think you may, I think you might have like a, a leg joint that he doesn't in the other, but that's about it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Easy way to save money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, looking through these, then we've got you've got all of your movie figures here because it looks like you've got all the, all the ones from the first Batman movie in '89, and you've got Batman Returns. Mm-hmm. Including even like some of the Batman variants, the color variants there. Yeah, yeah. And then the you've dark. got the wonderfully awesome Batman and Robin figures. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, when I got those, I used to work at uh, at KB Toy Works actually, and uh, I just bought a bunch of them because you know, I could. I got a discount and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, those are probably my most hated figures. <laughs> <laughs> but but I have like. like the- <laughs> You felt like you had to buy them because they were Batman. Well, that's the thing. I had like I had like three. I'm like, okay, let me go for the the, the whole first wave, and I and I bought that. So just, <laughs> so. Uh, I've been there. I've done the same thing. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite parts, though, has got to be the animated series stuff because yeah. the animated series was so great. And I remember I was a big fan of these toys when they originally came out. So it was really cool just looking at your collection. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big uh, Two Face fan, <laughs> and I'm envious of your animated series Two Face because I don't have one of those in my collection. Well, I'll, I'll, you'll, you'll probably be mad at me when I tell you this: is uh, a few of those are, are mine, and, uh, and I owned them for quite some time. Uh, a majority of them was actually given to me, given them, uh, given to me for free oh. uh, from my cousin. He uh, he had collected them as well over the years, and you know he had to move out and didn't have room for it, so he gave me. You know, probably I'd say a good seventy percent of them. That's great. Yeah, there's nothing better than free toys. <laughs> no, <definitely. laughs> uh, also, I've noticed you got the Hush stuff, the uh, DC uh, Direct Hush figures, which are excellent figures. The sculpts on those are great. Yeah, they're a little expensive, so I didn't get to complete them. But I was a, a huge fan of that 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 uh, comic book series. And oh, okay, that's, and that's what I was going to ask if you've actually yeah. read the series and everything. Yeah, it's such that's a great great series. Awesome. You got some of the later stuff too, like the stuff that Mattel put out. A lot of that was just actually sculpted by the Four Horsemen, who also yeah. do the Mattel Masters of the Universe line. So that that's one of the things that always turned me onto that line because I'm a big fan of like the Four, Four Horsemen's work. And, yeah, yeah, they're just so detailed, you know. And it's like when you, when they first came out, you're like, I have to buy these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if you had stopped collecting, you're like, these just look so awesome. You have to buy them, and so I did. So. Yeah, I was always a big fan of that uh, Mr. Freeze. I love the way that yeah. Mr. Freeze looks. Really yeah, like, cool. Mr. Freeze, Killer Croc, they, they looked really good. So out of all your Batman figures, which one's your favorite? Well, I'd have to say like one of my favorites is uh, you know, probably something from the, the original Batman movie figures. Um, just, you know, there, there wasn't really many of them. I think there's only like... Uh, I think three characters, Bob, the Joker, and Batman, that were released. Um, they had some other stuff afterwards, but in that original packaging, there was really only those three figures in the vehicles. But um, speaking of vehicles, the, 
it's kind of a toss up between that and the uh, the Hot Wheels diecast Batmobile that I own, uh, which ended up being kind of rare, I guess. Now uh, I just was always a big fan of that Batmobile, and to own it in a diecast, it was just it's just awesome to look at, and it's probably you know between that and the figures, it's one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, that Batmobile is really cool too. I have actually never seen one of those in person, so that is that's really neat. All right, well, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap it up, Lance. I want to thank you very much for showing up on this episode of That New Toy Smell and showing us your wonderful Batman collection. Well, thanks for having me. It's, 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 it's always a pleasure anytime. Okay, so here's an instance of one of those weird things about it. So looking through the files for 7-2, the Friday the 13th review, I can find the intro uh, to the show that ran before the review, and I found the original project file from Video Studio, which I can then load into Video Studio, and it'll say, hey, these pictures are missing, and I can throw it to the directory where the pictures are, and it'll pull all the pictures back in. And it'll say, hey, these videos are missing, and so I can point it to these videos, and it'll pull in the videos. The only thing that's missing are my narration files. So I can reconstruct the entire review except for the voiceovers. So there's me talking about some of the toys, and then you get like the montage of the photographs of the toys floating by, and then it goes back to me talking about the toys, and then it fades out at the end of the episode, but me doing the actual voiceover reviews of the toys, yeah, all of that's missing. So I'm going to keep searching and looking for that, but I thought it might be kind of interesting. Here's Dan and Duvall introducing me, talking about the Friday the 13th toys. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday the 13th. Does this, does this work on Friday the 13th? <laughs> and to celebrate, Dirt is giving us a retrospective, taking a look at many of the wonderful Jason Voorhees action figures. <laughs> Let's take a look. You know, there's just not enough time to cover everything. I mean, from the masks to the, the Halloween supplies to shot glasses, you got comic books. There's the, the other books, the DVDs, the videotapes. There's, there's even other toys. Stuff I own in my collection we just didn't have time to get to. Welcome back to part three of episode seven. I'm your host, Scotty Cash, with All By Myself, doing uh, Plastic Treasures, Scotty Cash way. All right. Pixel Dan has He-Man and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Dirt has Muscle Man and Tron. And Duvall has... Brave Star and unfortunately Little Mermaid. I have He Man and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers hit the scene in the 1990s and were an overnight sensation. Day of the Dumpster aired on August 28th, 1993 and it took off from there. Anything you wanted Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, they had. They had socks, hats, jackets, coats, toothbrushes, toothpaste. Anything you wanted with a Power Rangers logo on it or a Ranger on it, they had. I was such a big Power Rangers fan that I even won the biggest Tommy fan contest. Yeah, the winner got to spend a day with Tommy. Ha, roll the footage. So we're on green with Evil 5, right? Right. All right. Thanks, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. You know, he was a way better heel. He's right here. No, he's, he's not. I mean, he's no, no. Hey, uh... Can you give us a soda? 
Some, some drink. Hey, come on, man. He's our guest. Oh, Jesus. Okay, fine. I didn't win any contests, but I was and am still a huge Mighty Morphin Power Ranger fan. In fact, I'm 28 years old and my text message tone is calling the Dragon Zord. Yeah. And, and, and I still watch the show. But can you believe they're on their 17th season? But this isn't that new badass TV show smell. It's that new toy smell. So let's get started. And right out the gate, you got, in my opinion, the best Zords, the Dino Zords. You got the T-Rex piloted by Jason, the Mastodon piloted by Zack, Triceratops Billy, Sabertooth Tiger Trini, Pterodactyl Kimberly. Man, this is awesome. And it forms the mighty Megazord. The Mastodon's head's the shield. It came with its own sword. I mean, what's better than these? Also part of this line was the super awesome Dragon Zord, piloted by my favorite ranger, Tommy the Green Ranger. I actually remember going to Toys R Us and seeing this set on the shelf before Green with Evil even aired. Before Tommy even showed his face, they had these toys out. But thank God I got them when I did, because man, they sold out fast. Just like everything else, Power Rangers. But the best thing about the Dragon Zord is you could put it together with the Megazord to make the Mega Dragon Zord. Super awesome. Not the beginning of season two, the Rangers got these new super awesome Zords called the Thunder Zords. You had the Red Dragon Thunder Zord, piloted by Jason, and later on Rocky. You had the Lion Thunder Zord, piloted by Zack, and later on Adam. You had the Unicorn Thunder Zord, piloted by Billy. The Griffin Thunder Zord, piloted by Trini, later on Aisha. You had the Firebird Thunder Zord, piloted by Kimberly. And together, they form the Thunder Megazord. Now once again, in this line, Tommy had his own Zord. It was the White Tiger Zord. But it was cool because it could stand up like the Megazord, or you could transform it into the White Tiger Zord, which was super awesome. But the best thing again about this, was it formed with the Thunder Zords to make the Mega Tiger Zord. Now we're going to talk about another Zord. We're going to talk about Tor. Kind of like Titanus, they're both shuttle Zords. But Tor was awesome. He was a giant turtle that you could fit any of the other Zords in. If you took Tor plus the Thunder Mega Zord plus the Tiger Zord, that then equaled the Thunder Ultra Zord. But instead of doing that, we, we just took Ninja and put him inside. We thought it was kind of cool. And now for the third and final Zords. We have the Ninja Zords. Um, depending on which way you want to go, they either got them from Ninja in the TV show or the Temple from the movie. But they're pretty awesome as well. You had the Crane, piloted by Kimberly, the Bear, which was my favorite, piloted by Aisha, the Wolf, piloted by Billy, the Frog, piloted by Adam, and I guess the Ape Zord thingy, piloted by Rocky. It was an ape in the movie. But it's like a it's like an ape robot, I guess. But but either way, they form the Ninja Megazord. Now we're taking a look at Tommy's final Zord as a Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. It's the Falcon Zord. Now when you take the Ninja Megazord and you combine it with the Falcon Zord, it then becomes the Ninja Mega Falcon Zord. Awesome! Now we move on to the best part. Don't get me wrong. The Zords are super cool, but there wasn't nothing better than the action figures. The original five were 8 inch and they were super posable. You had Jason the Red Ranger, Kimberly the Pink Ranger, Billy the Blue Ranger, Zack the Black Ranger, and Trini the Yellow Ranger. They were also joined by Tommy the Green Ranger. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. They also had an 8 inch White Ranger Tommy. Now we'll take a real quick look at some of the evil space aliens from the 8-inch line. 
After the 8-inch line had such a good run, I assumed Bandai had a meeting and just decided now we need to compete with everybody else and make a 5-inch figure. The first 5-inch line were the auto morphers. They weren't as posable as the 8-inch figures, but they did something the 8-inch figures didn't do. They auto morphed. You could either have them with a helmet or without a helmet. They had the original six with their original weapons from the TV series, and just like in the TV series, you could put their guns and weapons together to make the, the big blaster gun. Now later on, they had Rocky come out as an automorpher, Adam come out as an automorpher, and Aisha come out as an automorpher. Also with Tommy as the White Ranger. And just like in the 8 inch, they released a ton of evil aliens in the 5 inch. Let's take a look. Now about the time the movie came out, they re-released all the rangers in a 5 inch. But this time they weren't automorphers. This time, they just had metallic outfits on. They were pretty BA. Also, from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, they released another line, a 5 inch line, of course, of the rangers in their ninja outfits. They're not as posable as the other figures, but they're still different and they're still pretty cool. Well, we hope you enjoyed our look at the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger line. We know we didn't cover everything, but we covered most everything, Zords and action figures. Uh, that's all the time we have for today, so I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, what would you think, Adam? I'm a frog. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up the seventh episode of That New Toy Smell. On to episode eight, I'll see you next month. Whoa, what? Uh... What? We're not done. Oh, we're not done? You got people to thank. Oh, you know what? Thanks to Brent Scrano for giving us the awesome mass footage as well as the amazing interview he provided for us for this month's first part of the episode. That's right, guys. And don't forget to check us out at www.thatnewtoysmell.com. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for the VGLosers.com forums and chat with us. And also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you email us at tntsadmin at gmail.com. So until next month, I'm Duvall. And I'm Pixel Dan. Hey, we'll see you next time.